NHL insider Elliot Friedman. Elliot, welcome back to the show, and thank you so much for joining us on such short notice today. No problem, and I know it's a tough day for you guys, so uh, sorry to hear. Elliot, why don't you just give us the lay of the land, the latest things. We'll, we'll just start there. What are you hearing? Well, I, I think this is moving in a, in a direction. There's there's no question about that. And and the re, everybody's trying to be careful because there's a lot of work that needs to get done. And in the in the world of where things like this occur, until the lawyers sign off on everything, nothing is done until it's done. So, <clears throat> but I think they're basically working around the clock to try to get this done by next week. I think there's a real desire to get to have it put together before the players break off um, and go their separate ways. Uh, I do think that's a very big part of this equation. I think also that they want to get it over with so that, you know, people can have some certainty um, about where, where there's, where this is going and what the answers are going to be for the future and for, people's own careers, uh, not necessarily players, but people, you know, uh, who have regular, do regular work inside the Coyotes organization. But we're moving in this direction and everybody's trying to see if it can happen and get it done. And we'll see where we are next Thursday. What could still derail this? Um, well, I mean, anything, I mean, I, it sounds like, a lot of based on what i heard about the memo that was sent around today it sounds like a lot of this has kind of been put together but you just never know i mean like the one thing i i learn about these things craig is that people don't like it when they become public because you know there's been a uh, there's an emotional reaction from the the true hardcore coyotes fans i've seen some of it online today and, you know, I, I always am careful. You don't allow what you see online to make you think it's a true shape of people's reactions. But there's a lot of emotion. And I think sometimes when this stuff gets out, whether people feel pressure or people get affected by the reaction of it, it can affect the way that they go about getting things done or how they feel about going out and getting things done. I really do feel, though, that this is pretty far down the road. I don't think that the memo and information that would have would have been sent out today as it was without everybody feeling uh, relatively secure that it was going to happen. But the one thing people always say is that you never know how public reaction can affect something like this. But I I think it's much more likely than not that it gets done. When when and I'm just speaking from what we hear at, at PHNX is when did this turn? And, and and I mean that everything we've heard from Javier Gutierrez, from Alex Morello Sr., from the Coyotes organization has all been positive. We're, at, we're going to make it to this June 27th auction. We reached out to, to Bill Daly and Gary Bettman, and it kind of got the inference that they were also going to wait for this auction, and we'll wait and see what happens. And then all of a sudden, literally within the next 48 to 72 hours, this has completely changed. What What happened? You know, Steve, I think it's been on and off for a lot of the last few months. Uh, I I really do. Um, like, you know, there was a lot of noise. I think the last time I was on was just around the All-Star break. Um, there was a lot of noise back then, and it kind of calmed down and went away. And then a couple weeks after the, <coughs> the All-Star break, um, I I was hearing a lot of noise again that this was going to get done, that there, there was going to be a move. And then... You know, a couple of people said to me, uh, I think it was it was right before the trade deadline. It was right before the uh, the the uh, it was right before Batman went the met with the media at the uh, sorry right at, it was excuse me it was right before Batman met with the media at the GM meetings. I was hearing a lot of this is coming again that it's it's coming, and then they kind of got the and that was when we weren't sure yet about the date for the here for the auction i was hearing it a lot and then the date came out and it kind of calmed down again and then i would say within the last week to two weeks there started to be a lot of noise steve so i think the best way i can answer it is it kind of went like that there were uh, there were times when it looked like they were going to wait and there were times when it looked like something was going to change I think there was a lot of pressure from the Players Association. I think there was a lot of pressure from the other owners. And to be honest, I, I think, Steve, when it was kind of realized that 
You know, they might have to stay in mullet for three more years anyway. I just think there was a lot of pushback. And I think even the NHL just said, you know what? Um, we can't we can't do this for three more years. And I think it picked up a lot in the last week or two. What do you think of this notion? And you had it in your article as well, um, that Morello is getting paid a billion for the team and Smith is paying $1.2 billion, but then there's this potential promise that Morello then would receive an expansion team to return to this market years down the line. What have you heard on that? Well, what, I, what I'm hearing there, Leah, is that like, my, this, what someone said to me is it's a billion for the team, and the league is brokering this. Like Morello and Smith are not talking to each other. This is all going through the NHL. Um, so the, I believe Morello is going to be paid a billion dollars for the team. And I believe Smith is going to pay, I've seen some reports of 1.3. So it's possible my number could be wrong, but I heard 1.2 to buy the team officially from Morello slash the NHL. However, it's going to work. Now I also reported from what I've heard, there's a five year window in there for Morello to, um, to come up with an expansion team where he sort of gets, I don't know exactly what they're calling it, but from what I hear, I would describe it as an exclusive window where he can bring a team into Arizona back into the market. Now, from what I understand, there are some parts, there's some things that are in there that he's going to have to achieve. Like, it's not just like he can say, I want to bring a team back. There's things he's going to have to do that includes building the arena. And the NHL, of course, maintains all final approvals for that. So I, I think it's, pretty much scripted how he would have to go about it. But from what I understand, there is going to be a five-year window unless it changes. Now, I think that that is happening for a couple of reasons. I think, number one, um, they want this to happen as smoothly as possible. They do not want to end up in court with Morello, so that helps against this. And the other thing, guys, is I don't believe at this time there was another local option in Arizona that they – uh, either f could consider for either it was something that could happen quickly or for legal reasons with Morello. I just don't think they saw another option that they could put on the table. So he gets that window. And, and still, even if you do that, you're still looking at Mullet Arena. I mean, even if there was another owner tomorrow you don't have an that arena, could pick yeah. up the pieces, you yeah. don't have a place to play. And I think ultimately that's one of the issues that this ownership has, group has faced since they moved into Tempe. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing about local ownership groups. I, I want to ask you, though, following up on the idea of this franchise coming back, the whatever 2.0 of the Arizona Coyotes coming yeah. back and Alex Morello being the owner again, when you have that sort of blank slate to come back in expansion, and and, and I asked this of Frank as well, and wash away all the filth of the past from this franchise, why would you come back to an ownership group that has made so many mistakes in the past in its tenure here? Well, first of all, I think you guys are much closer, <clears throat> much closer to the situation than I am. So I would defer to your opinion on Morello being the face. I just think, honestly, Craig, I think the NHL wants to do this as quickly as possible and as painlessly as possible. And, uh, you know, I mean, nobody like I don't know Alex Morello or his ownership as well as the three of you do. I would concede that right away. But I can tell you what I've heard, and that is that he's a fighter and if they want this to go uh, as quickly as possible, you're going to have to make sure that he's not going to be in a position or doesn't want to be in a position where he can go out and make this difficult. So I think that's what this is all about. It's Alex Morello, from what I've heard, he clearly wants to prove that he can do this. There's a lot of people who say that he can't do it. So what they're going to do is they're going to give him the window to do it, and that is – to prove that he can win the auction. Like, and, and again, I think it's important to note here, we haven't seen the final agreement yet, but I have heard there are pr provisions or protections or whatever you want to call it in there that says we're not just giving you a blank slate over five years to be the next owner of Coyotes 2.0. You have to, there are things you're going to have to accomplish. And I think that's probably going to be spelled out in there. And if he can't accomplish those things, then it won't matter what the window is. Historically speaking, Elliot, how extraordinary is it that we got to this point? We know the history of reloc relocation in the NHL, and it just, other than 
you know, the, the Atlanta to Winnipeg one. It's the only time it's happened this millennium. How how yeah. extraordinary do these circumstances have to be to us for us to get to this point? Well, basically, there you have to be at the end. Like I, I remember with the Atlanta Winnipeg one, they were at the end. They, the, you know, the Atlanta ownership was crumbling. They didn't have anybody locally who wanted to own the team. They didn't see a lot of hope there or any hope there. So they went and they moved. And unfortunately, that's kind of where we are now. There is someone who wants to own the team, um, but the arena situation being what it is, um, basically. You know what happens, Craig? It's that the, the commissioner, he he's not afraid of fighting battles. But sometimes you've got to realize when your battle is temporarily lost. And he won't give up on the Arizona market. He won't. I don't think he ever will. He thinks very highly of it and has fought for it. But you've got the players upset. You've got your other owners upset. And you've got, even if they win the auction, uh, by their own organization's own words, three more years before they can play anywhere but Mullet Arena, and I just don't. I just think the commissioner realizes you get to a point where you can't have that anymore. That the time has come, and so I think you only see it, Craig, when the time has come. And unfortunately, it's it, for Air Coyotes fans right now. The time has come. Yeah, and we've seen it in other North American sports. I'm not going to say that this is unique to hockey, but does it? Does it damage the credibility of a league or does it concern other owners when they see, oof, if I get to this point, I, I mean, I might lose my team. They might move my team. Or is this just such an extreme example that you throw all that out the window? It's B. It's an extreme example. I, I don't think anybody, I, you wouldn't see the other owners being upset if Arizona was in quote unquote a normal situation. Like I, like nobody, like, like, like I'll be honest, nobody says anything bad to me about Arizona as a market. Um, and look, like <clears throat> you guys are, the, the sad thing is, is, you know, you're making a real impact with the players you're turning out, you know, Austin Matthews, Matthew Nyes, like you, you know, Arizona hockey is making an impact on the league. And I think that's going to be very important for the NHL to continue. I think it's just simply the situation, Craig. I, I, it's got to a point where, you know, nobody, nobody wants to see it anymore. And if there was, if there was a true path out of it, I, we wouldn't be here today. But right now, there's not a true path out of it. What is your gut telling you as far as, or your sources, as far as the likely lo the likelihood, excuse me, of this happening, number one, and then number two, what would the timeline look like from what you've heard? Um, uh, well, Leah, I guess it was Frank, did Frank say 90 to 95? Um, I think was he was on just now and he said that. I, I hate guesstimating because usually it ends up very badly for me. But I think it's it's very high. It's it's I would say he's probably right about that. You know, like I said, I, I think there is, you know, I had a couple people tell me today that they really want to speak to the players in particular before they leave. And so since the last game is on Wednesday, you know, players are going to be able to leave as soon as Thursday. And I think one is tied in with the other. I think they they really want to do this as soon as possible. So I think it's very high. I know there's a ton of work being done on it. The, uh, the NBA Board of Governors meetings were just held in New York, and Ryan Smith was there, and I wouldn't be surprised if he met or talked to Batman uh, at the same time. That's where they first met a couple of years ago, was after an NBA Board of Governors meeting in New York City. So there's a history there. Um, you know, I just have to say, like, the, the, the people I think who are closest to it are basically saying, we're working 24 seven to try to get this done. So it's, it's going to be quick. I want to ask you about Salt Lake. Um, I read the, the athletic piece that Ian Mendez wrote today. And, and you know, when, when you go to a new market, there's, there's this glowing portrayal of a new market and all the advantages and all the good things happening. Is Salt Lake city a good market for the NHL? It's obviously a much smaller market than the mm -hmm. Phoenix area is. Is this a good market or is this, could this be, could this become a problem down the road? I don't think they're worried about it being a problem. Uh, I, I think that, you know, when 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 I first reported a few years ago that Ryan Smith was, was on the NHL's radar, it was because people wanted him in the league. They wanted it out there that he'd met with Batman and they wanted him in the league. And nothing that has happened has since then has changed my opinion of that. Um, you know, I don't know Salt Lake City very well, but I've, I've, you know, I've heard it's it's pretty booming area. 
Um, it's a wealthy area. They love their sports. Um, they're getting a new arena as part of the uh, Winter Olympics. Um, you know, they're. I've heard nothing bad about Salt Lake City as an area, and I've heard a lot of greatness, uh, great things about Ryan Smith as an owner. Like they want him in the league, and so I, I don't like. I think that Smith always wanted an expansion team, but sometimes circumstances change, Craig, and this is one situation where circumstances changed. All right, Elliot, uh, thank you for, again, once, as Leah said, thanks for doing this on short notice. I think I texted you like two hours ago. So thank no, you for jumping okay. on the show. <laughs> you know, I, I know it's a tough day. Like, I, I know that you guys love the Coyotes, and I know there's a, a hardcore fan base there that, that loves the Coyotes. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I really don't know what to say. I, I, I don't. I, uh, it's really tough. I understand. And, you know, I, I think the really the toughest thing is, and it's kind of like the question that uh, – uh, I can't remember which one of you asked me. I think it. I think it might have been you, Steve. Is that it? Really came almost out of nowhere. Like you were almost lulled into a sense of complacency that we were going to wait until June twenty seventh. So when this comes up, it really smacks you hard. So I understand how everybody there feels, and I wish I had something better I could tell you. But uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully in the long run, uh, Arizona hockey comes out for the better. Well, Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time, and we'll catch up soon, I'm sure. All right, guys. Take care. All right. See you, Elliot. Bye.